Hello, today I'm going to talk about the requirements for silicon carbide gate drivers. A gate driver is a power ampl amplifier that takes a low power input from a controller and produces a higher power output to the gate or base of a transistor. Here are some requirements created by Texas Instruments to drive silicon carbide MOSFETs. These requirements were created in order to maximize power efficiency and produce and protect the silicon carbide MOSFETs as well as the overall system. The first requirement is for the gate driver to have a high output drive voltage of 25 to 30 volts. Typically, silicon MOSFETs are driven with only 15 to 20 volts and this extra drive voltage allows the driver to withstand more supply surges and make it more immune to noise. Silicon carbide MOSFETs typically have a low threshold voltage and during incidents called Miller turn-on, these MOSFETs are unintentionally turned on when enough charge is transferred into the gate. And to negate this, silicon carbide MOSFETs are driven with a negative gate to source voltage. When the MOSFET is off, the voltage, the gate voltage, is below the source voltage. And in this case, much more charge is required for the gate in order for a false turn on to occur. And as we know, silicon carbide MOSFETs are efficient in high, higher switching frequencies. Therefore, the silicon carbide MOSFETs benefit from a higher peak drive current. A higher peak drive current results in a faster voltage and current transition, which will then reduce the switching loss. However, now faster switching means more noise generated in your system. That is why the next requirement is high DVDT immunity or common mode transient immunity. CMTI is the maximum tolerable rate of rise or fall of the common mode voltage between two isolated circuits. And this characteristic makes the driver more robust for higher efficiencies. The last requirements for silicon carbide is a fast short circuit protection and a small propagation delay. A smaller propagation delay means smaller dead time, and therefore, this reduces power loss through the MOSFET's body diode. This also reduces the system control response time. Now for our research, we decided to go with the UCC21520 isolated gate driver made by Texas Instruments. And as I mentioned before, the gate driver must have a small propagation delay and it also must have a good common mode transient um, immunity and it also must have good surge and noise immunity. Additionally, this gate driver has the capability of driving, driving silicon carbide MOSFETs up to 5 MHz. Now let's take a look at the schematic that we made. This is our buck converter. And as you can see, we used the UCC21520 gate driver. And over here, we used jumpers, uh, jumper connection to clean up the schematic. So it lo looks a lot more clean than it did before. Now over here, I and A and I and B are our PWMs of our system that power the, the MOSFETs. Out A and out B are the outputs connected to the separate MOSFETs and which powers them here and here. And as you can see, our buck converter, now the input is 500 volts and the output can be measured around this resistor here. And this resistor, you'll, I'll show you that it will measure 200 volts. So the buck steps down from 500 to 200. 
with an output current of 10 amps. And that makes the system a 2 kilowatt output system. Okay, and now if we run the transient, which can be done here, we can see the waveforms. Now the first one is, I already zoomed in, but the output voltage is measured here with 200 volts, as I mentioned. And the output current over here is about 10, 10 amps. And because this is a synchronous system, out A and out B should take turns turning on and off. And as you can see, if we take this point, for example, out A is on over here and out B is off. So they are indeed synchronous. And this concludes my video. Thanks for watching.